Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. New data from an S&P global ratings report shows us that a huge number of unprofitable companies are about to hit a massive debt maturity wall and currently face high risk of default in the higher interest rate environment that we currently have today after almost a decade of easy monetary policy that has helped these unprofitable businesses stay alive ever since the financial crisis. This is going to have repercussions on the economy and the financial markets. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what those are and when this is all going to play out. As you're gonna see towards the end of the video, there is evidence that currently suggests that this process has actually already begun playing out over the past couple of months. Don't forget to click on that like button if you enjoy this video. We do try and dig out uh, this sort of data, look at it objectively, put it in terms that everybody can understand and make it as actionable as possible for you guys. So if you appreciate that, don't hesitate to let us know. Subscribe to the channel if you are new here. And now without further ado, let's get right into it. So ever since the global financial crisis where we've had central banks keep monetary policy near zero. We've seen what you call the number of zombie firms rise dramatically over the last decade. Many people have been warning about these zombie firms being a ticking time bomb for the US economy. They're not completely wrong. I'm gonna show you why. These zombie firms are what you call unprofitable businesses that absolutely need to borrow money in order to stay alive. Now this has worked over the past 10 years with rates uh, near 0% in a low inflationary environment. It's been incredibly easy to refinance your debt whenever you need money. Interest rates have been very low and banks have been very willing to lend money. Now, of course, you can see over the past year, we've had interest rates rise dramatically because of course of the higher core inflation rate. Ever since around 1994, we've had core inflation hover between around one and 3%. So very low, very stable inflation uh, over the past 30 years. And of course, ever since COVID, where they stepped in with a massive amount of stimulus, we saw core inflation skyrocket to levels we hadn't seen since the 1980s. So of course, that has led monetary policy higher over the last few months. If you put both of these charts on the same scale, you can see the core inflation rate is still above the Fed funds rate. Now the Federal Reserve, the US Central Bank believes that in order to stop inflation, to bring inflation back down, it needs to raise the federal funds rate above the core inflation rate because that is what worked throughout the 1970s. Every time you had inflation rise, you had to see the Fed funds rate rise significantly above the inflation rate in order for inflation to come back down. Same thing here in 1972, same thing here in 1980. In fact, you can see in the early 70s, the Fed very quickly eased monetary policy as inflation was coming back down. And you can see the interest rate coming rapidly lower than the inflation rate very quickly. The Fed eased very aggressively here. And so inflation ramped back up because monetary policy was too loose. That happened in 1970, that happened in 1975. And so it wasn't until Paul Volcker came around and actually kept the federal funds rate very elevated and significantly above the core inflation rate for sustained periods of time that you actually did see inflation come down significantly and stay at lower levels. Now, whether or not this is 100% true, that's still to be determined. Inflation can come down without uh, the federal funds rate necessarily being above inflation. It also depends on the strength and fragility of the financial system. But the fact of the matter is that, that as long as core inflation stays at around these levels, the Fed is going to need to raise rates above those levels. And you can see over the past few months, the core inflation rate has remained pretty elevated. So that does increase the odds that the Fed is going to stay tight and tighter than they were throughout this period, as long as inflation remains at these levels. And as I'm gonna show you right now, uh, if that's the case, we are likely to see a rising number of defaults in this new era of monetary policy. And even after a few short months here uh, with higher interest rate, it seems like we're already seeing rising default rates among these riskier 
companies. Now, in this report from S&P Global, they show that these companies are going to need to refinance their debt, mostly in 2024 and 2025. Now, what does that actually mean? It means that if we are in a higher interest rate environment, you're going to see higher rates of default all the way into 2025 and even into 2026. And that's actually exactly what you saw towards the end of the 1960s and 1970s where you have the federal funds rate rise. And let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here. This is the ISM purchasing managers index. This is a measure of economic activity. Uh, when this goes down, uh, it means economic activity is weakening. And when this goes up, it means you're in an economic boom. You can see this is the 1970s, right? Let me add the federal funds rate. You can see as you had these tightening cycles uh, from the Fed, you had recessions occur every single time. And so the point is, as you have a fight against inflation, you're going to see more frequent recessions and lengthier recessions, right? Look at the difference between the 1970s here and the 1990s and more recently the 2010s, where first of all, recessions were very shallow, PMIs didn't go down that far and then they recovered very quickly. So you can see those gray bars, the US recessions were very thin. They didn't last very long. Same thing here in 2000. Now, of course, 2008 was the global financial crisis. So that was pretty severe. And of course, COVID, very shallow recession, very quickly monetary policy was able to step in because inflation was low back then. Now, what you can also tell is these were very far apart. Recessions took at least five, 10 years before playing out here between 2009 and 2020, 10 years between two recessions. Whereas in the 1970s, you can see it was only a couple years, maybe two, three years between two recessions. So that's why this is important because if we are in a higher interest rate environment, you can see a lot of this speculative grade debt is going to need to refinance in 2024 and 2025 at higher interest rates. They're gonna have to default and that increases the risk of a recession. And you can see here uh, in the 1970s, unemployment was trending higher throughout that period as you had higher and higher interest rates caused more and more financial instability as opposed to the late 80s where you had uh, more significant economic booms where unemployment is able to go down more significantly during these periods of prosperity in the 1970s. These didn't last very long. And this is one of the key reasons why we haven't yet seen high yield spreads rise significantly over the past few months. A lot of people have been saying that higher interest rates are going to lead to higher default rates. And so that means uh, option adjusted spreads are going to be rising. And they're absolutely right. That only depends on when these companies actually need to refinance because that is when they risk potential defaults. A lot of these speculative companies, unprofitable companies refinanced during COVID when interest rates were at zero. In 2024, 2025, it's gonna be a completely different story. And again, even 2023, it seems like we're getting the beginning of that. So in a way, we're still benefiting from the low rate environment that we had during COVID, where default rates were very low. And so these option adjusted spreads stayed very low throughout these periods. But if we are entering an environment where interest rates are gonna be higher for longer, you can expect default rates to be higher for longer as well. As you begin to clear out a lot of these zombie firms that we've collected over the past 10, 15 years in a 0% interest rate monetary policy environment. And in fact, you can see in that report, we have evidence that that is currently happening right now. This is the weakest links share of speculative grade population, weakest links being companies that uh, are at risk of defaulting. And you can see just over the past few months, we've seen a dramatic rise in the number of these companies that are at risk of default in this new interest rate environment. So what has still been a declining default rate environment throughout the last couple of years, ever since COVID, where companies were able to refinance very easily, the economy was strong. Now we're getting the very opposite signal where companies are beginning to have trouble refinancing in this new interest rate environment. The economy is beginning to weaken. And so this is just the beginning of a new era of higher default rates in a tighter monetary policy environment. And our model portfolio 
We post a ton of research on this at gameoftrades.net, a lot of uh, trade ideas, investment ideas based on our convictions in the market. We also track our performance uh, very closely on our model portfolio with reviews benchmark against the S&P 500. We really want to be very transparent, very rigid with how we display our investment ideas at gameoftrades.net. There's not a lot of services out there that do that. A lot of them are very opaque, uh, very vague, and that's because they don't have uh, very good research backing up their claims. So that's one of the big uh, differentiating factors. If you want to test out our service, get your free trial by clicking the link down below and join our community. Now that's about all I wanted to cover in this episode. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash the like button uh, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now in the meantime, I wish you good luck on your trading and see you next time.